Welcome to Tech Simplar Studios. Mac OS 11 Big Sur represents a huge update to the Mac operating system, bringing with it many changes over its predecessor Mac OS Catalina, and with Mac OS Big Sur having been officially released to the public for a little while now, I wanted to remake the video I made in August comparing the public beta of Big Sur to an official release of Catalina, this time comparing an official release of Big Sur to an official release of Catalina. So let's see, is the official release of Big Sur faster than Catalina? Let's get right into the tests. Starting off with the boot speed test. macOS Catalina is on the left, and macOS Big Sur is on the right. I'm using the same Mac as in the previous video, an early 2015 12-inch MacBook with an Intel Core M5431 CPU, Intel HD Graphics 5300, 8GB of DDR3 RAM, and a 256GB SSD. Since it's an older Mac, the test results may not be completely representative of a test with newer Macs, but I chose to use it as it allows for any performance differences between the two operating systems to be better accentuated. Catalina consistently boots up around 27 to 28 seconds, which is much faster than it did in the previous video due to these tests now being conducted on fresh installs of macOS, with nothing on them except for the apps used to conduct this video's tests. What's surprising though, is that it takes Big Sur about double that time to boot up, booting up in around 54 to 58 seconds each time. A huge win for Catalina. Now for the program opening test. Here, we'll be testing Adobe Photoshop and seeing how long it takes to open a .psd file 30 seconds after boot up. As you can see, Catalina once again outperforms Big Sur, but this time by a much smaller margin. Catalina took about 14 seconds to load Photoshop, while Big Sur took 15 to 16 seconds to accomplish the same task. Catalina is therefore about 7 to 13 percent faster than Big Sur in this test, and it's another win for Catalina. But how about website loading speed? Can Big Sur beat Catalina here? Safari is used to display YouTube.com on both operating systems. YouTube takes 4.83 seconds to fully load in Catalina, while it takes a whole 8.18 seconds to fully load in Big Sur, so Catalina wins again, with a loading time about 41% faster than that of Big Sur's. How about Cinebench R23 though? Will the upgrade to Big Sur affect raw CPU performance? The tests finish at nearly identical times on both operating systems, and likewise, the scores are quite similar as well. On Catalina, we see a result of 1,165 points, and on Big Sur, that result is only two points lower, and we see a result of 1,163 points. Big Sur and Catalina essentially tie here, meaning true CPU performance isn't really affected in this case. Now, time for the graphics benchmark Unigen in heaven. These are the settings I'll use for this test. Now, just sit back and watch the amazing scenery. As you can see, macOS Catalina averaged 1.2 more frames per second than Big Sur did overall, and while both Catalina and Big Sur yield the same minimum FPS of 8.5, Catalina attains a maximum FPS of 75.8, which is 2.3 FPS higher than Big Sur's maximum of 73.5. In terms of score, Catalina scored 977 points compared to Big Sur's 948, meaning that Catalina edges out with a result 3.05% higher than that of Big Sur's. So, Catalina isn't much faster than Big Sur when it comes to graphics-intensive tasks, but it certainly still is faster, 
and reliably so. How about exporting a video in Final Cut Pro? Here, I've loaded in the project file for my 11 things to do with an old PC video, and I'm exporting it at 1080p 60fps using the H.264 codec. And it is here that macOS Big Sur claims its first ever performance victory, public beta or official release, exporting the same video that Catalina exports in 18 minutes and 33 seconds in just 15 minutes and 34 seconds. That's a whole 2 minutes and 59 seconds, or 16.08% faster. A major win for Big Sur. Now for the battery life test. For this test, on both operating systems, my obsolescence playlist will play until the Mac runs out of battery. The screen brightness will be set to 75% and the audio will be muted. Precise battery information will be displayed on the coconut battery windows. At about 3 hours and 17 minutes into the test, the Mac running Big Sur already runs out of battery. It takes until just over 3 hours and 51 minutes for the same Mac running Catalina to run out of battery though, meaning that a full charge in Big Sur is, in this test, mathematically equivalent to an 85% charge in Catalina. Once again, a solid win for Catalina. So, Catalina undoubtedly performs better than Big Sur in these tests overall, but does that mean you shouldn't upgrade? Not necessarily. If you have a newer and or faster Intel Mac, the performance differences shown in the previous tests will most likely be much smaller. Actually, for some newer and or faster Intel Macs, Big Sur may even improve performance and efficiency overall when compared to Catalina. Even on this MacBook though, despite Catalina being generally snappier than Big Sur, it's hard to tell the difference between the two, boot up and battery life tests aside, unless you're specifically comparing them side by side. And while some tasks may be slightly slower to complete on Big Sur, you get a lot in return, including many redesigned and more functional default apps, longer support for apps and patches in the future, optimized battery charging to improve battery longevity, AirPods automatic device switching, and of course, a sleek and modern user interface that redefines the Mac experience for the next few years. Despite the fact that Catalina will most likely be supported and receive security updates until late 2022, I personally still see Big Sur as a worthwhile upgrade, but it again comes down to the question, do you want, for the most part, potentially slightly better performance, or more modern and capable operating system? If you want to see other macOS related videos or operating system comparison videos like this one, check out my channel. I've made quite a few videos in both of those categories. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Like this video if it helped you, and subscribe for more tech videos like this. Also, don't forget to check out my automotive channel, Tech Simpler Garage. See you all in the next video.